Hello, everyone. I welcome you here again. So today we have Dr. Ritu Parna Biswas with us. So welcome, ma'am. Hi, Puneet. Hi. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure, ma'am. So uh, we want to start with your academic journey first, ma'am. Please tell us. Yeah. Um, so to start with, I uh, completed my 10th, 12th and my bachelor's from India only. Um, I was there in West Bengal. And then for my master's, I moved abroad um, in Warsaw University of Life Sciences in Poland. So I did my bachelor's in microbiology and also my master's in microbiology. Um, I completed my master's in 2017 and I joined my PhD in 2018 at the University of Verona in Italy. And after completing my PhD, I uh, recently joined my postdoctoral scholar position at the University of California in the Ludquist Institute. Okay, that's wonderful. So since ma'am has already completed her PhD journey, so uh, there will be a lot of things which ma'am will want to share with all the viewers. So ma'am, uh, we want to know what are the basic hygiene things which a scholar should know, irrespective of particular area or discipline in which they are doing their research. So what are the common things which, which should be, you know, generally applicable for all the scholars? Right. Um, so this answer could be divided in two parts. Those who want to do a PhD in India and those who want to move abroad for their um, PhD or doctoral studies, right? Uh, firstly, in India, uh, the net is required, like JRF is required to pursue a PhD, right? But abroad, it is not required. You only have to have IELTS or TOEFL. And sometimes that is not also required uh, to apply for a PhD. Right. And um, abroad PhDs, are most of the students, they may think this is very difficult to obtain or with my academic background, I cannot do that. But this is just a myth. Um, I encourage all the masters or bachelor's pursuing students, those who want to dream big and explore abroad, uh, they must try to apply. And uh, I also guide them professionally for that process. And um, a PhD is all um, always a big achievement, right? If you are pursuing it or you have completed it, you learn a lot of things, which is um, not just academic things, but a lot of life skills. So I um, encourage students to pursue PhD, be it in India or be it in uh, abroad, anywhere. Um, this is the best thing that can happen in their life, in their research, in their research career, right? Uh, okay. What are the things that one should remember? I have to add a little, a uh, few things. Yes, that uh, uh, this PhD is a long course. You have to dedicate four to six to seven years of your life into this. So the students need to be very patient and always willing to learn. That's that kind of attitude they should have while pursuing it. And um, they have to be very good with their professors because they um, will recommend them in the future for their future applications. And so these are the points that they should remember while pursuing a PhD. Okay, that's wonderful. So ma'am, do you want to share something about how somebody can apply abroad for a PhD or maybe postdoc also? Because you have, you know, yes. currently doing postdoc. So what are the ways, yes. what are the, you know, country or what should be the criteria to apply? Right. Uh, so first, I will focus on why they should apply, right, abroad, especially. Uh, firstly, the scholarship, for sure. It is almost four to six times more scholarship than one student is getting in India with okay. their PhD degree. Okay. Uh, it starts around uh, 90,000 to 1 lakh. It starts around this much of scholarship per month. If okay. a student for, the is, PhD, uh, for the PhD scholar? Yes, for the PhD, right. And it can goes up to two lakhs and more per month for a student, uh, depending on the countries they're choosing, right? So it depends. Uh, that is the major criteria that the student should think about, that if we are able to get this much of scholarship for my PhD, why should I stick to 25,000 or 35,000 in India, right? Um, also, the uh, scope for a student's career is um, better in abroad if they're applying because they can travel to a lot of countries, they can attend a lot of conferences, make networks with some professors, 
and fix their academic career after their PhD as well. While in India, a um, lot of times it's not possible because um, the conferences or seminars are national and not a lot of international professors are joining those conferences, seminars. So making network, building network is a very um, uh, good point they should think about if they are uh, pursuing their PhD. Right. Very right. Anywhere. right. Yes. And uh, so that after their PhD, they know that what are the career paths they have. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it is very important that they should, they always should um, take care of um, attending conferences, presenting posters. Right. And so these are the opportunities they, the student is having if he or she is applying or pursuing a PhD abroad, right? And um, during my PhD as well, I am professionally guiding students for their PhD applications, uh, not only PhD, but bachelor's, master's, PhD, and postdoc. I have a team of researchers or my friends, those who are already posted uh, as researchers worldwide. And we are trying to guide our students uh, with uh, any information they need for the application, how to write CV, cover letter, that, that are the very um, important things for your application, that your CV and cover letter has to be very different from the other applicants so that you get selected, right? And uh, we, write, we help our students to um, write cover letters as well uh, so that it reflects their best things from them and let the professors know that they are the best students that they may have for their uh, PhD course. Um, and this process is really hectic. It goes on for almost one year. And we do, we try to be out with our students so that they don't face any issues while applying for, not only for the PhD position, but for the visa, for the interview sessions they have to go through. We try to be there always uh, with our students and guiding them uh, at each step. And um, this is a beautiful journey. And I encourage um, not only my juniors, but also a lot of other students uh, through social media that um, once they should think about applying abroad because it's a beautiful journey. Uh, yes. They can travel a lot, yes. right? Uh, yes. So uh, Dr. Ritu Parna Biswas is, is the right person to guide in a professional manner. So uh, I'll mention the uh, doctor's a contact details and the uh, you know website address so where she can, right. she can be contacted and which kind of services mm -hmm. they are professionally offering so thank you so much right. uh, dr ritu parna so moving ahead we will talk about the uh, postdoc things since you are a mm -hmm. visiting phd scholar also in howard university so do you want to mm -hmm. share your experience what are the you know uh, the cv points yes. or the kind of qualities somebody you know uh, big universities looking for for a from mm -hmm. a uh, visiting phd scholar right um so as i mentioned that networking is very important for a phd uh, students career right um and the university i was uh, uh, joining i joined for my phd they offered uh, me several things so that um, we can explore go abroad we can pursue research and connect with the professors. So they had uh, one scholarship named internationalization where I applied and I got through the scholarship and I applied for the Harvard Medical School in the immunology department. I was working there. And um, this is not very easy, let me tell you, to get into any position uh, of Harvard, uh, be it as a bachelor student, as a master's or PhD, right? It is very difficult. They look for a lot of other criteria other than your marks. So your marks or the marks of a student is not the sole parameter that you will be judged while your application is, um, you know, look for um, any application or any position. So other than your marks, you have to have a lot of things in your CV, which makes uh, the CV stronger for that position, right? One of the things will be uh, publications. Uh, if a student um, is publishing a lot of articles, especially as first author, it is he or she will be preferred uh, so much for not only for visiting, uh, uh, you know, positions, but also for any normal PhD and postdoc positions. So publications um, are a very important parameter in your CV on which you will be judged. 
then um, your referees who are willing to refer you and uh, there should be some professors that you have very good terms with and they should be willing to write on behalf of you whenever they're required. So this is a very good thing that if a student is um, having good relation with any two to three professors in the department or in the university, because for any position uh, he or she wants to apply abroad, always the professor's reference or recommendation will be required, right? So um, the, your published articles, your references, and how many uh, conferences or seminars you are attending in general, how you're publishing your things, maybe as a poster in some conferences. These are the things that will be looked for in your CV, on your CV if uh, you're applying for a visiting research scholar position. And the most important thing will be what are the topics of the research you want to pursue in that lab. If you are not aligning your research interest with that lab, you will not be selected, right? So these are the things that you have to keep in mind before um, before start of your application process. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your learning and experience with all of us. So is there anything else you want to share with all the viewers? Right. Um, so because I belong to um, an academic background, I always like to motivate young Indians, especially that they should apply abroad and uh, be it negative, be it positive. At least they should go through the process so that maybe for the next application, they learn a lot of things from the past mistakes. And uh, next time they become stronger on their application. And if the student is having a need of any assistance, we are always there. We are team fly high. We offer our guiding to the students and they can contact us anytime they want. And we will be happy to guide them not only for their PhD, but also bachelor's, master's and postdoc um, applications. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your time with all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.